Mrs. Mala Bauer, thank you so much for joining us again in ICTN Education Conference. We're very happy to see you again thank in you. Qatar. And first, we'd like to know, you, oh, you discussed last year about the fearful message that uh, children and teachers and parents are exposed to when we speak about cyber safety. So from your experience, how do you see the reactions of parents and teachers when they are exposed to such a message? There is a research study recently that came out in the United States that actually showed that after teachers have been exposed to one of these scary messages mm -hmm. in an in, in, um, program at school, mm -hmm. they actually decreased the use of the internet um, in their classrooms. Mm -hmm. And there's been um, many uh, uh, stories circulating in the United States mm -hmm. now from kids themselves mm. saying that, gee, after we see one of these messages, my parents really don't want me to go online. Yeah. And um, so it's actually been a very, since last year, a watershed moment in the United States mm. because there's been so much research now that's very clearly pointing to the, in a, um, the in efficacy, mm -hmm. the, the fact that these kind of scary messages don't in fact change behavior. Mm. There's been um, increasing reports about um, uh, predator safety, mm. about what uh, in fact that these messages are ill-targeted, mm. targeted to the young and appropriate age children, mm. that in fact we're not even getting out the correct safety message to children. Mm. So, um, so that what's happening in the United States now is that Two things. One is we're going to be needing to realize that we need, if we're going to talk safety, we need to be getting out the correct message mm. to the correct age. Mm. And secondly, that by scaring everyone, mm. all that we've been successful in is mm. scaring teachers to mm. go online. Mm. Mm. And um, a very high-level official in the United States last week, in fact, spoke at a conference, a very public conference, and said, it is critical that we get our children online. Mm. It's critical to their success in the 21st century, mm. and um, in essence saying that we need to get through this fear. This mm -hmm. is not helping us. We've been, done a very um, uh, poor job mm. of delivering an important message inappropriately. Mm. And, and so there's been a, a very, very big transition in the United States a, a, um, a groundswell movement saying we're not going to deliver that kind of fear message anymore. Mm. We're going to start delivering a much more appropriate safety message. But more importantly, mm. we, we realize how critical it is to get kids online. Mm. And um, that's where we're going to focus our efforts. Mm. So you said that when teachers dealt with cyber safety, they were a bit uncomfortable with the topic itself. So why was that? Well, over the past 10 years, where have the teachers gotten their information from? Mm. They've gotten it from law enforcement. Mm. And the law enforcement message has been one of fear and scare tactics. Mm. And so, and the, the media message has been one of um, fear and scare tactics. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is where they've been getting their information. Mm. Um, there's been some um, misinformation um, given out in the public about studies that were indeed very carefully researched mm. and then misunderstood uh, or mis, um, the results misinformed mm. so that um, it's much like uh, 10 years ago the United States had a program on a, what we called a stranger danger message mm. and um, which kind of said to kids be careful of strangers and in fact the statistics showed that it wasn't strangers they should have been careful of it was you know uh, inappropriate touching by people they knew. Mm. So the, the message was really off target. And then mm. much the same thing has happened in the United States with this uh, safety message. Mm. Um, but there's also been some new research talking about, um, or I should say not so new research, it's research has more recently been publicized mm. in the area of social norms, mm. saying what should we be doing what kind of messages should are effective in changing behavior? What kind of messages should we be giving to children? Mm. And in the era, arena and research of social norms, it's saying that what we should be doing is having kids within a group discuss what's okay and what's mm. not okay. And so that kind of group conversation has been very successful, for example, in, um, in dealing with um, u the use of seatbelts mm. and in and um, anti-smoking campaigns in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So when the ki when it's the kids as a group um, decided as a norm that smoking isn't cool mm -hmm. or that you have to wear seatbelts, mm -hmm. 
that kind of peer pressure works can work in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And the research is beginning to say, let's let's begin to in this arena of safety mm. use the same kind of method. Mm. As, why are we using these ineffectual scare tactics mm. Mm. that yeah. ha that haven't worked before? Uh. That have never worked. Mm. So cyberbullying is one of the areas that many parents and teachers and even children are concerned about. So what do you think, uh, basically from the studies you have, you've uh, come, came across, what are the, f the latest findings about cyberbullying? Some of the most recent findings and the most important findings are that um, the message, we should be talking more to the bystanders the people that are observing the cyberbullying, mm. rather than speaking directly to the cyberbullying. Mm. That a much more effective manner is talking to the people, the, the, the group that's observing this mm. behavior and saying, you need to speak up and, and step in and mm. say that this isn't okay. Mm. Um, the findings have also said that children are very uh, unlikely to tell adults mm. about what's going on. Mm. Um, and so that a mechanism the school might set up is a way for a child to let someone know an, um, anonymously or quietly, mm. some mechanism that they can tell someone. Mm. And most often that's a peer. Mm. So then, then if you've effectively set up a, a, some information in the school, the peer knows that they need to speak up mm -hmm. because it's very, very unlikely that, that the child being targeted will speak up. Mm. Um, I think those are the two most important findings. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it goes back to um, getting a, a communication out within the school community mm -hmm. that this is not acceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and that's informing parents, mm -hmm. informing um, and letting them know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Digital citizenship was one of the topics you discussed in the morning. So what is a who is a digital citizen? And is it applicable to children only or to parents and teachers? And what, are our, what is your definition of a digital citizen? I, I think the concept of digital citizenship is applying to any of us, mm. that means all of us today, yeah. that go online. Mm. Um, and I think it's simply using the, the, the uh, concept of citizenship um, pulling it into cyberspace, saying as a citizen of any country, you have responsibilities mm -hmm. um, and you have privileges. Mm. And um, now as a citizen of cyberspace, you have responsibilities and you again have privileges. Mm. Um, but I think it, it encompasses a bit more. When people talk about cyber citizenship, they're talking about uh, understanding some safety mechanisms, understanding some manner, you know, manners, mm. um, politeness, etiquette, mm. but they also typically broaden the definition to include digital literacy, meaning that um, one might say, well, as a citizen in our face-to-face -face world, mm. uh, a citizen is typically educated so that you can participate in your um, democratic processes or participate in, in um, daily discourse. Mm. Well, as a digital citizenship, you also need to be literate. You need to be educated. Well, what does that mean? Mm. And in cyberspace, digital literacy means being able to effectively retrieve information, to evaluate it, to discern if it's timely, who the author is, to understand if you're being sold something, mm. um, to critically think through the resources. So that, that becomes a very critical part of digital citizenship. Mm. Um, what I think it's um, really, the terminology is really been using mm -hmm. Um, to expand the conversation beyond the safety scare tactics we were talking about yeah. earlier. It's being used to say, um, what we really are talking about is being a citizen in cyberspace with recognizing responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, recognizing um, the skills that we need to have mm. to effectively participate mm. in the 21st century. And the mm. 21st century happens to be yeah. In large part online. Mm. Okay. I'm sure most of our viewers want to know what CyberSmart does when it uh, tries to approach, pair, uh, approach teachers and talk to them about cyber safety. So please tell us in detail the efforts you've done and the, the approach you've taken to approach. Uh, to um, CyberSmart was the first organization uh, 10 years ago mm. to provide teachers with a standards based curriculum. Mm. Um, in not just safety, but manners, 
uh, research skills, mm. in all of the skills that we're now terming digital citizenship. Mm. So for 10 years, we've, our message to teachers has been that this is a, a, a part of skills that you need to provide your, your um, students with. I mm. think what's changed over that 10 years mm. is an increasing recognition of the importance of those skills. And why is that? Um, in the United States, at least, increasing recognition that, yes, it's important for the success of the 21st century uh, achievement and, yeah. and success in life, but on a more immediate level, yeah. um, we're seeing more and more students become disengaged yeah. in school. So they, they have a, a life where they're on the iPod, they're texting their friends, they're retrieving information, they want to go to a movie, they go online. And, and they go into school, mm. and, and the world goes back. It's like a time warp. Mm. They go into school, and the teacher is saying it's page 38, and we're looking at chapter 6 mm. today. Um, and our message to teachers has been, is, is consistently, but increasingly so, has been get the kids online. Use the timely information. Mm. Some, you know, um, why are you looking at a textbook when, we, when you could be looking at resources that were printed you know, much more timely or in real time mm. or allow the t a child to collaborate with the information mm. um, with, with a, 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 um, a classroom across the world? Mm. Um, why are you teaching in black and white when the world's color, so yes. to speak? And, and so that's increasingly been our message working with teachers. So based on your efforts, what was the reaction of teachers? How did they respond? I think initially many teachers are extremely reluctant, mm. um, and it, but understandably so. Mm. I think that their um, teachers in the United States are very pressured with meeting content and test standards. Mm. And so their first reaction is, um, uh, my kids have to pass this test. Mm. And so the first thing we need to do, what we typically, is make them um, begin to realize that it, to engage the students in learning, mm they're going to have to move in this direction. And interestingly, it's the schools that are, have the m kind of most disengaged students, if mm. you will, that feel the most urgency. Mm. Unfortunately, those are oftentimes the schools that have the least amount of funds. Mm. Mm. Um, but I, I think that um, it's very easy for a teacher to say, uh, well, gee, I, I, I'm going to keep doing that what I'm doing. Mm. I think that um, that's going to be... Um, less of an excuse, if you will, mm. because as the teachers begin to see the kids get more and more disengaged. Mm. Um, but in fairness, some of our standardized testing is kind of out of sync mm. uh, with the kind of learning that should be going on. Mm. There's a very strong movement now in the United States to begin recognizing what we call in a 21st century learning. Mm. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that has been pegged to um, using Microsoft Word and, and uh, are you using a wiki and, and, you know, and, and all these like little gizmos and gadgets throwing out mm. when um, really we should be talking to the teachers about what are your learning objectives, what are the content objectives, mm. and how can you most effectively and most engagingly mm. um, teach those, those objectives mm. because then the, the, the multiple choice standardized testing that the kids are doing yeah. kind of just comes. Mm. And interestingly, just a side comment, the research that's coming out about how we learn cognitively from the cognitive sciences, so of course we didn't even know, at, you know 20 years ago, but when you look at how, how you learn, mm. we learn through by making connections. Mm. So this discrete kind of pushing information in, down in discrete units mm. Um, really doesn't work in terms of learning theory. Mm -hmm. So if you can begin to look at cognitive learning theory, how do kids learn best, mm -hmm. combine that with um, the notion of engaging the kids, mm -hmm. you have a very, very powerful uh, reason to begin to relook at how we're teaching the kids. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to a teacher who's really stressed about meeting the deadlines and just giving the curriculum and who doesn't really have time to maybe know more and he's just really stressed about the legislation at school and stuff. So what would you say to that teacher? First, I would say I understand. <laughs> I, I, I totally sympathize. I would probably, having said that, I would probably go to the administrator because uh -huh. I think in large part this is a message that um, uh, needs to come from the administration. Mm -hmm. um, the administration of the schools need to understand that first they need to set out that vision. Mm -hmm. Here's where we're going. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then they need to do everything to allow the teacher's opportunity to buy into that. Mm. Um, we feel that comes from professional development. That's mm. why we say that um, it, when you provide professional development, you allow the teachers an opportunity to make mistakes, mm. to have questions. Mm. Um, you're asking them to make a huge transition. Mm. Learning theory shows that um, uh, typically you teach the way you learn, mm. the way you did learn. Well, none of these teachers, even the young ones, even the 22-year-olds, did not learn mm. in the environment we're asking them to teach in now. So I really think that it, the administration needs to say, it's okay, we're going to give you this professional development experiences on a sustained basis. Mm. not going to throw you in. This is not a one-day workshop. Mm. We're going to expose you to things. We're going to let you feel, um, we're going to let you make mistakes. We're going to give you the opportunity. With CyberSmart, we typically talk to a school and say, Let's take you through four weeks of just getting them engaged in what the vision is. Mm. But we're going to do this online. Mm. We have schools that say to us, well, come talk to us. Mm. Say, we're not going to talk to you because we, we want the teachers to begin learning mm. online. Because mm. that's the yeah. way, you know, the way we're, we're asking them to, in the direction we're asking to, them to move in. Mm. Um, and that goes for the younger teachers, too, by the way, who are extremely savvy, but um, online, feel very comfortable, mm. but don't have a context of how do you pull that into a classroom. Mm. And so it's really saying to, uh, giving the teachers an experience to say, we're not asking you to throw out what you learned in school. Yeah. We're still talking about setting very clear learning objectives. Mm. Um, we're still talking about some basic strategies of classroom management and the content areas you know. But we're asking you to rethink your whole pedagogy um, and, and put it in context of, the kind of world we live in today. Mm. And that's a huge, huge leap for teachers yeah. to make. Mm. Um, and it's a, a huger leap to make in front of a classroom of 30 kids who are mm. very critical of you. Yeah. So I, I'm very sympathetic to teachers, and I think that um, the uh, opportunities for, for professional development mm. have been uh, very few and far behind. And it's wonderful to bring in, uh, I know we're out near where I live, the state, mm of New Jersey has very clearly identified uh, 21st century learning. And what they did is they hired some very well-known speakers and mm. great, terrific people. Mm. But to me, sitting and listening to an inspirational t person talk about the vision is nothing compared to getting them online and having them experience some of that learning themselves mm. and maybe make mistakes mm. in front of their co you know, with their colleagues mm. so they feel comfortable to go those next steps. Mm. So my final question, tell us about the PBS episode, The Digital Nation. What was uh, it about? That's not a good question, but it, it's not applicable to... Um, okay. It, it was, the PBS uh, Digital Nation um, episode was really just looking at how we're living our lives online. Okay. That was the general gist of it. It was, it, it was really... Um, in terms of education, in terms oh. of career opportunities, in terms of um, just life online today. Yeah. If anything, it, it, it would get a very broad overview. Um, one might look at it and say, I realize how much of life uh, online is oh. today. It, what it reminded me of when I saw it, without yeah. my background, was that for us to use terms like oh, this is your real life, this is your on life, mm. is completely false. Mm. What we talk about is this is our face-to-face -face life, yeah. Yeah. and this is our online life, but they are both very real. Yeah. And I think that mm. terminology that we used to say about like real life yeah. is very false no, now. Uh, There's no distinction. Uh, you know, we are, um, we are living online, yeah. and we are living face-to-face. -face. And that kind of circles back to some you know, discussions with safety with the kids about saying, or with adults, for that matter, with teachers, for that matter, saying, you know, thinking about um, managing your impression, your image online. Mm. For mm. example, just that's been an issue in the United States where a teacher goes and has a Facebook page mm. Mm. And, and doesn't think because that's their personal life. Mm. The trouble is, is I'm the principal and I can see their personal life mm. and maybe, you know, you don't want me to see that. Mm. So it, it does all come together and there's not the clear distinctions that we used to have. Mm. And I think this is important conversations, mm. um, and and very much um, important conversations that the administration of the school sets sets forth. 
Um, and, and by the way, I think that the, the problem been with the safety of the conversation is that teachers, it was like another, an added extra. Like, why in the world are we talking? You know, I have enough on my plate. Yeah. Now you're asking me to do safety. Yeah. Doesn't that belong to the um, computer guy uh -huh. in the computer lab? Uh -huh. And you, know, you really want to say, first, there shouldn't be a computer lab anymore. It should be all integrated in every single course. And um, it probably shouldn't be a safety lesson. Mm. There probably should be an ongoing, just like security experts talk about, an ongoing series of messages and a general climate. Mm. And um, teachers that feel comfortable enough mm. to, uh, in the midst of giving out an assignment to go online, take a moment, a teachable moment, mm. to say, let's talk about um, safety. I'd like to talk today about, for a moment, mm. about um, Cyberbullying in the context of we're going to have an online assignment, and um, it really isn't appropriate to uh, say, you know, gee, your comment was stupid. It might be a funny thing face to face because you can see my expression. I'm smiling, and we're, you know, yeah. but it, it doesn't play out in, in on the, online. And mm -hmm. so the conversations become more integrated. I think that that's the point we're we're hoping to go to, and that's what we try to do with the professional development. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for this lovely interview.